I'm going to show you advanced skill song in here. Okay, many years ago when I was a wee lad and I started off doing woodworking, I worked with this old guy. He was like in his late 60s, okay? So this old guy taught me this trick of how to cut backwards with a skill saw. And because he saw me cutting forward, struggling, and he's like, Mike, what are you doing over there? And I said, well, what are you talking about? I'm just cutting with my skill saw, you know? No, 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 he says. He says, this is how you do it. So he grabbed his skill saw up, and he started cutting backwards, and he, and he explained to me and showed me how to do it. Ever since then, I've been doing this technique. Every single carpenter that's seen me do this, they've picked up the technique, and now they do it. In this video, I'm going to show you what I do, how I do it, and let you be the judge for yourself and try it for yourself. You will see that with a little bit of practice, a little bit of patience, that you will master the art of cutting backwards. You will see all the dust shoots on the ground, nothing goes up in the air, so you don't have to breathe it if you're in a room. So this technique is really good for, for doing countertops when you make your scribe, something like that. Mike Nery left me a comment on one of my videos. It was the do-it-yourself, how to install pegboard step-by-step -step installation. So anyways, he commented that at the five minute mark, I cut the board backwards. He says, why do you do that? So I replied and I told him I'd make him a video. And so I figured I'd do this for, not only just for Mike, but for everybody else that wants to know this. You don't even know that you need to know this until now that I'm showing this to you. So I'm gonna show you how you could cut wood particularly for um, an installation guy, maybe someone that does some um, install work, how you can take your skill saw and instead of cutting in the forward position, okay, and, and risk it getting chip out, well you can cut going backwards. So it takes a little practice, it takes a little getting used to, but it's possible to do it, you know, because most of the time people, when they use your skill saw and they're scribing something to the wall, they cut forward, well, by cutting forward, they create a lot of dust in the air for one thing. So it's everywhere, it gets all over your work surface, all this dust that you're making. Then, you, you always have to stay away, you have to use a sharp blade and you always have to stay away from your, your pencil mark by, what, 3 sixteenths, an eighth? Well, by cutting backwards, it allows you to cut your line, you could even cut right up to your line, okay, take that line right away with you, okay, cut backwards like this, you pull the guard up, Okay, and all you really need, if you're good enough, after a little bit of practice, is a block sander, and you, and you just block sand it smooth. Okay, so this video, this video is not for the beginners. If you're a beginner, just starting out with woodworking, do not watch this, this is not for you. This is for advanced people who know what they're doing, um, installers with a lot of skill, and people who really know how to use your skill saw because there's a, there's a danger when doing this. So you have to be aware of that. All you people with a lot of skill, if you're still watching this, um, you're gonna wanna keep watching this because if you don't know this trick already, then this is something you absolutely have to know. Follow me, I'm gonna take you over here, set the camera up a little bit better so we could get a little bit better perspective on the line that I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna do a couple different cuts using a dull blade. I'm only using a dull blade here. Try to find some melamine we could cut going forward cut some millimeter going backwards and show you the difference and a piece of Formica going forward and going backwards, I'll show you the difference. I'm going to show you the difference between going forward and going backwards and I'm going to show you a couple little tricks of how to make it happen. There is risk involved here because when you are cutting backwards, you're going to first take your, um, your guard, you pull it up like this, you, you start off at the end, right, and you go backwards. Oftentimes, even for somebody with a lot of experience, if your blade is not deep enough in the cut, Sometimes the piece, your saw will have a kickback, okay? And your piece could go flying forward. So there is risk involved here. But if you're doing countertops and you're scribing those in, you're doing something heavy, just like countertops, or something similar to countertops, sheet of wood or something, this is something that, um, this is a technique that really can help you out. It saves a lot of time and a lot of wear and tear and you can extend the life of your blade instead of tossing it because it's a little dull. All right, I have a lot more videos coming out too. I just can't edit quick enough here. I have a backlog of projects that I've done. So keep watching here. Hopefully you like what you see. You'll subscribe. Like my video because I'm wasting material that I need for another project, but that's okay. I'm, I'm building a doghouse and so I'm gonna take a chunk of that material for this. But I figure, you know, your knowledge is better than the dog's comfort. <laughs> Right. So in most cases, with this technique, you're not going to want to cut backwards with your skill saw on a piece of wood like this. You can, there's nothing wrong with it, but just make sure with a small piece that it's clamped down to something heavy. Because a lot of times, it'll get away from you and it'll go backwards and it'll just shoot. It's hard to control. Eventually, you'll become comfortable with doing this. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is clamp this piece down. 
All right, we're gonna make a mark just a little bit here. I guess we'll just make multiple marks real fast here. Most of the time with this technique, you're gonna take this um, material that you're using and you're scribing it to the wall, something similar to that. So oftentimes, when you go backwards, you're not gonna be going at a 90 like this, you're gonna be doing um, an angle, okay? So that's one thing to understand. If you do need to have a perfect 90 cut, it is possible to hold the saw, okay? Hold it like this and do your cut. Just make sure that this back portion is flat, okay? And you can often get your 90 going this way. But in most cases, you're gonna be holding it at, a, at an angle like this and you're gonna be going backwards. So now the trick to not get blowout with doing this is when this blade spins like this, this the teeth are gonna be going up like this. You're just gonna wanna make sure that this portion where the up on the actual blade, you're gonna wanna kinda lean that away from your cut. So instead of going forward and burying this, this end over here into your piece that you just cut, okay, pull it away slightly. So now, if you're gonna be doing this technique here, you're gonna to want to only be taking off the maximum of a half of an inch, okay? Uh, oftentimes, if you go more than a half of an inch, it becomes a little bit harder. It's doable, just a little bit harder. So, if what you might wanna do, if, you have, if you're taking off several inches, you run your skill saw going forward, take off, you know, within a half of an inch, take it off, and then you can go backwards if you have space, whatever, to do that with. So, again, when you finally do get there, you're gonna go backwards like this. You're not, this is not, we're not worried about being at a 90 right now. We're kind of having, putting a little angle on it. Twist this back portion slightly like this, an eighth of an inch, and continue going down. So oftentimes you can do that same technique. If you're cutting a wall of some sort, you can start down here low, and you can slowly cut and you work your way going up, 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 going backwards, up, 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 up. Now if you, if you have a, inch and a half wall that you're scribing against the wall, or if you have a leg that's an inch and a half, it doesn't matter how deep it is. What you would want to do also, the same technique applies, is you can go backwards on each side, go backwards, 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 but you're only gonna be going in, this is an inch and a half thick, so you'd only be going in an inch, okay, on each side, you would make a V, then you could take your sander and you cut your line, but you just get really close to the line and you're good to go. Okay, so if you're cutting backwards, it is possible to get right in there, okay, like this, and then make your cut. This guard, this, this um, base here never touches your surface. You stay above it the whole time. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut one of these lines, well, I guess I should cut this line, one of these lines, going forward, and we'll see what kind of chip out that makes. This is a well-used blade. This is a well-used blade. You can see that. This is probably, ready to throw away or to resharpen um, if you're a forward cutter. <laughs> because I'm not a forward cutter, I'm a backwards cutter. Okay, it's gonna keep on going. Okay, probably not the best example, but you see the little bit of chips right there. Now I'm gonna cut backwards on the next line and we'll see if their chips are the same thing. Okay, so I'll cut right on this line, right there, at a bevel. Look at that, right up to the line. And I don't know if you noticed as I got to, as, as the um, blade, as it was spinning the upside over here, if, I, if you've seen that I pulled that away. So now, whatever, what, we'll have to go underneath here, flip it over and we'll see what that did. So these marks right here, this is what you would have had by going forward. So I'm gonna do it again with this piece right here. We'll go forward and then we'll go backwards and we'll look at the differences. Okay, so it's harder to see any marks with pencil lead on a dark surface. 
Now, if you really want to try to avoid chips, you could also put white masking tape down on, on Formica or um, green or blue on um, finished a pre-finished surface. I'll cut forward here and we'll see what that does. And then the second pass after we look, I'll go backwards. See some chip out. I had to say um, it slipped out a little bit. So to be fair, maybe I should do one more cut going forward. But you can see the chip out there. All right. So I'm gonna make one more cut going forward. Try to make it even, and I'll go a little bit slower, just because normally when you go forward with a blade, you're gonna want to go slow anyways. But for Micah, you're not gonna want to go fast. So I don't know if you can see that or not. It's pretty chipped out. What I will do is I'll just bury it and go backwards right in the middle of this piece or so. And we can look at the differences in one shot. This portion up here was the forward cut. Okay, where my fingers are. You can see if it's pretty chipped out. Now, this one here, that's the, that's, this is the finished side. The one above it, the reason you see chip out is because that's where I was pulling the blade back. That, that's what chipped that out. So, you know what, I guess I'm just gonna have to grab a bigger piece. This is actually the piece that I was gonna use for my doghouse that I'm building. Okay, and I'll give you an example. There's a couple, there's a little strip of laminate here. All right, this is just an extra piece, but it's some good birch plywood. So the first cut's gonna be going forward. This is just how a regular guy that doesn't know any better, this is how he would cut, okay? For mica on plywood. Let's observe all the dust. See all that dust right here on the work surface? It's quite a bit, okay? Then we're gonna look at the line here. Start over here. I was going a little bit slower. I, I took the line pretty much. Okay, so let's make sure my camera gets good focus on this. So I guess normally you would leave a little bit. You would leave an eighth of an inch, and then you would come back and sand. See, if you were doing this professionally, that would be a big no-no right there. You're getting paid to do this. Let's take the dust broom and clean this off now. It's clean again now. I'm gonna do the same cut, this time going backwards. Again, I'm just gonna take the line. I'm gonna go right up to this line right there. Say about a quarter of an inch, okay? You'll see that when I cut this line, I could cut it exactly on the mark, not have any chip outs like you see here that are gonna go into the material it's going to be a nice clean cut. Then when I'm all done, if this was my finished scribe right here, all I have to do is take a, a block sander and sand that. But a lot of times it's, it's difficult to get, you know, when you're hurrying up, it's difficult to be perfect, especially if you're in different situations. So you just want to run a regular belt sander. But this is just an example, a demonstration to show you cutting backwards um, can be useful. I'll make this cut. Starting from over here on this side, and we're going to go the opposite way now. So now, first thing we're going to do, we're going to look at how much dust is up here. Compared to before, very little compared to before. Let's observe all the dust. See all that dust right here on the work surface? It's quite a bit, okay? There's a whole lot less dust up here. So now, 
get this little bit of dust out of the way. Now let's take a look. So I took the line. Well, I didn't even take it. I saved just slightly. Look at the camera's having a hard time pick up, picking up on it. Okay. So let's look here. You can see the line. At the bottom of your screen. You can see there's zero chip out whatsoever. I'm right. I took that line almost. So pretty much it's close enough to where I can run a block sander on it and get it pretty good. And remember, this over here is the pencil mark that I added. This is the chip out that would have resulted in going forward possibly. Now this blade is really dull too. If you had a sharp blade, brand new blade for example, um, you'd be styling. I've got the block sander out. What I will do real quick is I'll, with a worn out block sander, I'll sand this and then we can take a look to see how straight I can make it. Okay, so I block sanded this. Let's take a look and see how it looks. My camera's having a hard time focusing on this light color material. So you kind of see the pencil mark there. You can see half of the pencil mark, the other half I cut off. It's hard to see probably, but. Okay, now I'm gonna do another pass and I'll try to zoom the camera so you can get this angle here, right here. Hopefully you can see as the blade comes up this way on the return right here, hopefully you can see how I'm beveling it a little bit and I'm pulling it away. Maybe I'll reposition the camera. Maybe I'll take a couple passes. Put another line here. Let's see. Let's see if you can even see that. So this may not have been the best video, but my point is I'm trying to show that cutting backwards can be nice to know. It, it can um, come in really handy in the future. So just take the time, practice doing it. You'll find that you're going to like it too, I'm sure, because everybody else that I know likes it. Alright, so I made the video, I put it out there, you watched it, hopefully it was worth your time. Hopefully it's something, a technique that you could pick up and use for yourself. Um, I know it's not a big deal, it's only going to be a few people that are going to benefit from this if they watch this video. But it's just a technique, I thought I'd throw it out there, just a quick little tip, nothing special. Alright, so I have some picking up to do, and we shall see you next time. You know, I started wearing hearing protection about two years ago because every time somebody would say something to me, they would say, Mike, blah, blah, I'd say, huh? Every time, huh? What? What? Okay. What? So I started wearing hearing protection about two years ago for almost every cut that I make and my hearing has come back really good. Okay, I could hear a lot better than I could. So not trying to be a safety nerd or nothing like that, but this is really these are just cheap Harbor Freight two ninety nine dollar ones. Maybe I should get some better ones, but these are working out pretty good. I always wear safety glasses too because I've I've gotten metal in my eyes, I've gotten from Mike in my eyes at the job, and man what a pain in the butt. Couple two different times. I'm in the parking lot, I end up having to leave the job and go to the store try to get some tweezers and get a, get a light and get q-tips and flip my eyelid over and so always 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 wear my safety glasses now I don't even risk it I won't even make a cut with my, without my safety glasses but this ain't for the safety nerds or out there the safety police it's just what I do okay so to start this off I just want to say that um, that I don't even know what to say here what do I want to say